Welcome to the Gun Museum. I'm curator Stephen Bartkiss. You're about to see our new exhibit, Art from the Earth, Early American Stoneware, featuring over 100 pieces of uniquely decorated stoneware made in the Northeast between 1780 and 1880 from the collections of Edwin and Thayer Hochberg, Paul Doherty and David Benke, and Ted and Judith Kells. We're here today at Guy Wolf Studio in Hi. Bantam, Connecticut, and Guy's going to show us how to make a pot. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, if you were, uh, the wheel that is below the picture of what we're doing here came from Herbie Brooks's pottery in on the Litchfield Goshen line, and it has a treadle on it. Um, I would hope that he had an apprentice who was helping. So if I had somebody sort of helping with the, the power of this, I'd say, John, be careful. We're about to be pushing on the clay really hard. When you start making a pot, you have to put it under quite a lot of torque. And I'm going to start by getting the clay homogenous. And the way you do that is to move it around a little bit. is just when you go running you sort of stretch and this is the same kind of thing that you do to make sure that the clay is in good shape before you start shaping the pot so I'm going to start by making the floor of the pot and then right away you start pushing the clay into the wall There are a lot of shapes this pot will go through before getting to the jug. And none of them are extra ideas or you're not just doing it for the fun of it. There is real architectural law to getting to a finished pot. Uh, a jug is nothing but a, a slight arch at the bottom with a dome that then points towards another arch at the top. And and then the, the closing of the, of the bottle. So the whole setup of this pot is to get ready for that. This will be a taller pot while it's being made than it will be as a finished piece. In other words, you make it taller and then as you push it out into the rounder thing, it drops. So again, this doesn't look much like a bottle. I have it at a height that um, is good for the shape of it. And I want to make sure there's no water in the bottom because I'm going to be closing this completely. Now, a straight edge, the rib to the potter. It can be all sorts of different things, but it's just a straight edge. Before, I was using my finger and the inside of my hand, and I was going pushing in and pushing out, and the pressure between the two made the clay rise. I'm now going to shape the pot and this rib is to the potter what the violin bow is for a fiddle player. Basically what it's doing is it's an architectural amplifier. And I'm going to start by doing an arch towards the bottom. That's going to spring into the dome of the middle shape of the pot. And then towards the top it's going to point still a dome. I'm going into an arch and ending on an arch. Well, if I just spread this out a little bit, this would be a cream pot. The shapes of uh, the jug and the cream pot are very, very related. So in other words, they're kind of the same thing, but the jug has taken it to a, a little bit more of a transition. Uh, I'm sorry, the the cream pot itself is sort of a transitory pot leading towards what is going to be a jug. So I'm going to make the bottom third of this pot rather fat. And from here on in, I'm not really going to be working 
on the bottom third of this pot. This is all set up for closing it in. setting up an arch right on that neck. So as you see, everything you're doing it has a method and it's all going towards a finished thing. I'm going to set up another because arches are so strong, you set up that, that dome. This is sort of the last minute I'll be able to get inside this pot. So I'm going to go down make sure that everything is staying happy. And sort of set up the wall to point towards that top. The important thing to say here is that as a modern potter, I'm not copying an old jug. I'm, I've studied the architectural reasons for what makes that old jug so good, and I'm sort of keeping to a tradition. Uh, my father was an abstract and expressionist, and he once said for a, a particular um, oh, writing, he, he wrote, uh, tradition is not a form to be imitated, but the discipline that gives integrity to the new. And what that means is that we're, I have to know the why on what made this pot so good, uh, what made, sorry, what made those pots so good. And the last 40 years has been a sort of uh, a study on that so that this pot can happen. It couldn't be more fun. So here again, you're being pretty rough bringing it in. When you're rough bringing it in like that, see how even the top is? But that's all part of moving the material quickly. The number one thing about traditional pottery, the number one definition of traditional pottery is you know where you're going before you start. rib. So I'm going to put this aside and let it dry for a while before I put the handle on it. You can't put a handle on this thing. And I'm going to just make sure that that has a nice curve to it going up into that top of the bottle. You put a line on it so you know where the bottom is. Now, when you look at the older pieces in the collection, you'll notice that they have different amounts of lines on them. The very earliest stoneware pieces have a lot more... Uh, beads and reeds than the newer pieces do. So one, one of the ways you can date the older ones is that you see right below that rim there might be two or three little rings. Now to make sure nobody buys this as an old pot, it's very important to then put a modern name on it. So I've just used this tool here and stamp the pot. So there we have a jug. You'll notice this is the same amount of clay as this. See how much bigger this is? That's because you're, it's, instead of putting all that material into making the jug part, you're leaving it open. Okay.